Hey, welcome back to the Calm Living Blueprint program and module four. This module is called Pure Awareness. And in this first lesson, I'm going to introduce you to this special part of yourself that you may not even realize or be aware exists. And this part of yourself is called the observing self. So we've done a lot of these mindfulness exercises so far, noticing thoughts, noticing feelings, noticing your breath, and so on. What is this part of you that does all the noticing though? We don't have a name for it in everyday language. In this program, in the Calm Living Blueprint, we call it the observing self. Have you ever heard the saying, I think, therefore I am? It was made famous by the philosopher René Descartes. Or perhaps you've heard similar sayings like, learn to think for yourself, develop your mind, think positively, think harder. Our society teaches us that thinking is the ultimate human ability. Lateral thinking, rational thinking, logical thinking, positive thinking, optimistic thinking, all are widely encouraged. And of course, thinking skills are very important in life. But there's so much more to you than your thoughts. No matter what you're thinking, imagining, or remembering, there's a part of you that's separate from your thoughts. A part of you that's able to observe your mind in action, to notice what it's doing. And that's the observing self. Whenever you observe your breath or your thoughts or your feelings, the observing self is the part of you that's doing all that observing. The closest we can get to this experience in everyday language is through metaphor. Now, one excellent metaphor, which can be found in Buddhism, Taoism, and Hinduism, compares the observing self to the sky. Your observing self is like the sky. Thoughts and feelings are like the weather. The weather changes continually, but no matter how bad it gets, it cannot harm the sky in any way. The mightiest thunderstorm, the most turbulent hurricane, the most severe winter blizzard, these things cannot hurt or harm the sky. And no matter how bad the weather, the sky always has room for it. And sooner or later, the weather always changes. Now, sometimes we forget the sky is there, but it's still there. And sometimes we can't see the sky, it's obscured by clouds, but if we rise high enough above those clouds, even the thickest, darkest thunderclouds, sooner or later, we'll reach clear sky, stretching in all directions, boundless and pure. More and more, you can learn to access this part of you, a safe space inside from which to observe and make room for difficult thoughts and feelings. Another metaphor I really like to explain the observing self is that of a chessboard. Imagine a chessboard where the white pieces are all your positive thoughts and feelings and the black pieces are all your negative ones. We go through life desperately trying to move our white pieces across and wipe off all the, ba all the black pieces, right? All the positive thoughts wiping out the negative thoughts. But the problem is there are an infinite number of white and black pieces. No matter how many black pieces you wipe off, more will appear. Also, the white pieces attract black pieces. You move forward the white piece, like say you're thinking, I'm a good conversationalist. And immediately it attracts the black piece. A thought will then come up. No, you're not. What about when you responded awkwardly yesterday to that guy that asked you a question? So we can go through life wasting a lot of time and energy trying to win this battle that can never be won. Or we can learn how to be more like the chessboard. The board is an intimate contact with all the pieces, but it's not involved in the battle. There's a part of us that operates like this chessboard, the observing self. It enables us to step out of the battle with our thoughts and feelings while giving them plenty of space to move around. Okay, so I hope that helps you get a better sense of the observing self and what it is. That'll serve as a quick introduction. In the next lesson, we're going to start tapping into 
pure awareness. So this part of yourself that we just talked about so that you can start using it to your advantage to help relieve social anxiety. All right, so great. I'll see you in the next video.